Good morning to one and all present here. Uh, I feel very privileged to welcome you all on behalf of Department of Electronics in association with IQSC, St. Thomas College Autonomous Trishu to the National Seminar on Influence of Electronics in Instrumentation and Trends in the LSI Design. It is mark of our undying tradition to invoke the Almighty at the beginning of an important event. So I would like to start our session with a silent prayer. Thank you, everyone. Next, I would like to call Mr. Jinesh Paul C, head of the department, Department of Electronics, to deliver the welcome address. Good morning to all. Respected dear manager, Mark Tony Nilangavil, our principal, Dr. Joey Kayal, our vice principals, Reverend Dr. Martin Columbrath, Dr. Joby Thomas K, Dr. Sister Alphonse Matthew, IQSC coordinator Dr. Father Anil George K, distinguished guest and resource persons, Mr. Arun R, head of the department, Department of Electronics, MMO College, Mr. Rajal Aj, CEO, IMET Solutions, convener of the program, Mrs. Rudusri K J, head of the departments, staffs and dear students. The change in the field of science and technology is more drastic. Such development in knowledge and skills are a key challenge for all passionate and enthusiastic in every field of science and technology. Today, the Department of Sci Electronics organizing one day national seminar on influence of electronic instrumentation and trends in VLSI design. The areas like VLSI design and electronic instrumentation are rapidly growing as well as changing areas of electronics. Hence, this seminar on this particular topic find more attention on our days. Our manager and auxiliary bishop of Trishu, Matroni Nilangavil, is a well known orator, writer, theologian, and a pioneer in the field of research and academics. More eagerly watching every prospect of our college. We are very happy to hear the blessings and views of our manager on this most relevant occasion. I welcome our dear manager, Martoni Nilangavil, to this inaugural session. Our principal, Dr. Joy Kael, always taking a keen interest in academic activities and programs to boost up all the stakeholders of our institution particularly the entire students. I welcome our principal, Dr. Joey Kyle, to this seminar. Vice principal of Jubilee Block, Reverend Dr. Martin Golambrath, always gave constant support and guidance with his special attention to us in all our day-to-day -day activities. I welcome Reverend Dr. Martin Golambrath to this meeting. IQSC coordinator, Dr. Father Anil George K., as an insight to develop the institutional growth through the total quality management and gave timely support to us to coordinate the seminar. I welcome Dr. Father Anil George to this webinar. Our resource person, Mr. Arun R, head of the department, Department of Electronics, MAMO College, of, was a researcher and developed different tools for ICT in learning, having long time experience in teaching and industry. I heartily welcome, sir, to this seminar. Mr. Ajal Ajay, CEO IMET Solution, is an academician as well as an industrialist, having an experience of different roles like professor, head of the department, innovator, and entrepreneur. I heartily, I heartily welcome, sir, to this seminar. I welcome all the head of the departments, staff coordinator, Mrs. Rudusri KJ and all the staff members to this webinar. Students and staff from different colleges are gathered here for this seminar. I heartily welcome all of you to this seminar and hope that it will become a beneficial one for improving your technical knowledge and skills. Once again, I welcome all of you to this national seminar. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I feel very privileged to invite 
our respected principal, Dr. Joy KL, to deliver the presidential address. A very warm good morning to all. His Excellency Martoni Nilangavil, our manager, the resource persons of this day, Mr. Ajayal and Mr. Arun, Vice Principal Reverend Dr. Martin Kolambrath, IQC Coordinator Reverend Dr. George Anil George Kongoth, Mr. Jinish Paul, the head of the Department of Electronics, Rudusri, the coordinator of this uh, national webinar, dear faculty members and dear students. A knowledge and thirst for knowledge never come to a halt. Since time immemorial, man has began his earnest thrive for knowledge on various aspects in this universe. Depending on his own experiences, relying on the experiences shared by others and scholars of different aspects of knowledge, man has attempted to widen the scope of knowledge and its application. Together with the advancement, with the varying schools of thought and learnings, modern knowledge has opened a number of different pathways along which we tread on our attempt to know better and understand better. Hence, all attempts to gain knowledge are to be recognized and appreciated. Let me congratulate the Department of Electronics for organizing this session in order to enlighten the scholars, our students, to carry on studies with a scientific and modern view. We have Mr. Ajal and Mr. Arun, scholars entered with the gift to share with you. I thank the resource persons on behalf of the management and administration of the college. Applied Electronics and Instrumentation Engineering, the advanced branch of engineering deals with the application of scientific knowledge in the modern branches of science. This is an industry oriented branch of learning which needs exact knowledge and skill for application. Proper diligence in understanding it and the proper application of the theories will bring in excellence in career. Students have to deal with software and hardware matters like microprocessors, microcontrollers, embedded system designs, VLSI, etc. I hope these sessions will provide our students with necessary skill for the acquisition of knowledge in various aspects which are currently in demand for. Congratulating and thanking the organizers once again and wishing our students all the best. I remain, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, sir, for your kind words. Next, I would like to call an eminent personality who doesn't need any introductions. We are humbled and grateful by his presence. I consider it a great honor to request our manager, Martoni Nilangal, for the inaugural address. Thank you, Ritushri, for your kind words. Dear respected principal, Dr. Joy Kale, our dear vice principal, PsyQVC coordinator, and uh, HOD of uh, the Department of Electronics, Dr. Jinish. Today's main speakers, Mr. Arun R. and Mr. Ajil AJ, and all the participants. I'm very happy and proud of the Postgraduate Department of Electronics of St. Thomas College Autonomous for having organized such a wonderful
and to deliver a few words in our now hello am i audible now yes yes sir you are audible yeah okay i'm very sorry that uh, my connection got lost and i you can see that it's already an electronics problem <laughs> uh, 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 I, uh, I I just started saying that I'm very happy and proud of you, the Department of Electronics, Postgraduate Department of Electronics and Thomas College Autonomous, for having organized such a uh, national conference on electronics and uh, especially its relevance in the instrumentation uh, and so on. Uh, first of all, I humbly acknowledge that I am a, I'm totally a lay person in this particular area of electronics. Though as a young child I was interested in these circuits and so on, I never got a chance to study further uh, and you know I chose a totally different field of research. But one thing I am aware that this is a fast growing uh, area of knowledge. I can only uh, tell you some of my own experiences, especially when you, uh, you know, when, when I began my postgraduate studies in Belgium in 1995. Those days, you know, I first came to know about internet, or I've heard, but I personally uh, encountered what this internet is when I reached Belgium. You can imagine uh, those days in 1995. And uh, I, I just pick up some of the interesting experiences I underwent. In 1995, I was the first one to get an email from India among all the Indians who studied there in Belgium. And that too, I came to know that I got this email in the middle of the night. I called my friends. They all walked more than a kilometer just to see the email from India. Can you imagine that today? And my first computer there was a laptop, which was those days very, very uh, uh, advanced, even in Belgium. And that was, uh, that was 4 MB memory. Memory was 4 MB. And that was a, that was a black and white, uh, with a black and white monitor. And today when you speak about the importance of electronics in uh, VLSI, I think this aspect of chips and uh, memories and so on, you can imagine in 1995 is not very far away from me. I still uh, have all wonderful memories of my student days. But now we have grown, we have moved much, much faster, a, 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 a pace which is faster than normal generations change. And therefore, I'm sure this is a very important topic. I still remember I had a very good friend, uh, a, a friend from Bombay. Uh, who was working as a scientist 
uh, in IMEC, which was the uh, which was the electronics research department of my own university where I studied, Catholic University Louvain, which was uh, started in 1425. And so there, this my friend Prabhat, he was a graduate from uh, IIT Mumbai. He had no PhD, but they they appointed him only to reflect or evaluate the feasibility of the new technology that is being developed there. And uh, I remember him telling me, you know, uh, Tony, there is now a new technology developing, which may be uh, in effect after 10 years. And uh, that is about one particular way, particular cable, which will help us transfer data in a very fast pace, fast pace. Uh, and that was all he was talking all, all, all talking about this optical fibers and then he was telling me the possibility of uh, such cable where you can have the internet TV and all those devices and telephone all in one cable. I, I was really uh, shocked to uh, hear all those uh, uh, interesting uh, plans for the future. So you are people who do research that is in five or ten years. Uh, builders of you only want to remind you of the some some of the ethics which you should have in your mind. I remember my friend Abhad once told me that he was really worried about force to work with. Uh, rather, he told me that they speak about detrimental to our uh, social relationships. You know much better than me. Now these are all uh, all realities today. We live with all these realities. Where uh, some some developments uh, quench our uh, our 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 curiosity, our intellectual uh, thirst, and so on, but may not be all very good. Uh, for the society at large, even to the to the to the discussions today, will help us to grow uh, in uh, to to help us and the world to grow into a much faster pace at the same world at large live in a more peaceful and we wish all the best to the speakers as well as to the organizers department of uh, postgraduate department of electronics and all the participants from various uh, colleges and universities all over india and i also wish you great inspiration all the blessings of the lord with these words i with your all permission inaugurate this national conference thank you very much thank you father for your consideration and blessings your thoughtfulness is a gift that we will always treasure now i would like to request our iqc coordinator uh, dr father anil george k for felicitation Um, sorry, Father, uh, you are not audible. Yeah. 
you are not audible now hello can, yes, can yes, you sir. hear yes yes okay so good morning everyone uh, uh, ma tony nilangavil the manager dr joy kail principal and uh, all the dignitaries and participants on this online platform uh, good morning and uh, we know we live in an era that is dictated by the electronics the world of electronics and uh, with the vlsi we have the whole world on our palm in terms of um, you know mobile phones and things like that and therefore i think this is a right uh, step uh, from the part of the department of electronics to organize a webinar in this specialized area i wish and pray that uh, this event becomes very successful in in Sorry for the interruption. We will get we will get back to you soon. Uh, thank you, for, Father, for your words. And uh, it's time to propose vote of thanks on this occasion. Uh, let me first start by giving glory to the Almighty God for making this event possible. And first and foremost, I thank our manager, Martori Nila Gawal, who despite his busy schedule, has found time to grace this occasion. And I also express my heartfelt thanks to our principal, Dr. K. L. Joy, for his words of encouragement and unstinted support for this function. I thank Reverend Dr. Martin Columbus, Vice Principal, and Dr. Father Anil George K, IQSC coordinator for their support and valuable contributions. I owe special gratitude to the resource persons, Mr. Arun R, HOD, Department of Electronics, MAMO College, MAMO College, Calcutta, and Mr. Ajit AJ, CEO, IMED Solutions for accepting our invitation. My heartfelt thanks to the HOD, Mr. Janesh Paul C, for his valuable contribution, support, and guidance in all efforts. And I thank all friends and good thoughts for their constant support. Thank you all. And we have concluded our inaugural session. Uh, now we are moving on to the technical session. I am privileged to have such an eminent personality uh, as a resource person, Mr. Arun R. HOD, Department of Electronics, MMO College, Manasheri, Calicut, as a resource person. So I request sir, to handle the technical session. Uh, hello. Hello, good morning, everyone. Uh, I, th I think I'm audible. Hello? Sir, sir. Hello, sir. Uh, am I audible? Yes. OK, thank you. Thank you. Uh, so respected dignitaries and uh, uh, and uh, the HOD of Electronics Department, uh, Ms. Pratishree, and uh, dear students. Uh, so thank you very much for giving an uh, opportunity to come in front of you like this, unfortunately. I would put the word unfortunately because uh, we are going through a very difficult time. But irrespective of all the odds, so as mentioned by uh, uh, our principal, uh, Joy sir, irrespective of all the odds, uh, we, uh, we have gathered here uh, for sharing uh, a bit of knowledge that we have uh, acquired in all this time. Uh, so nothing is like a negative uh, here. Uh, let it come, we will face. That's the attitude uh, that I can see uh, from this uh, webinar, which has been conducted in such a way. Uh, it's uh, Actually, I was like looking at the inaugural uh, sessions, were, like beautifully organized, uh, very well arranged. Uh, so th thank you. Thank you once again for inviting me for handling this session. Uh, so, so before going to that, uh, I would like to add a few things like, you know, uh, electronics is one of those subjects where uh, it, it fascinates or it, it energizes uh, regardless of age. 
because I was seeing, uh, uh, I was I was hearing to uh, our uh, Reverend Bishop uh, uh, Tony uh, Nilangavil uh, that he was mentioning about having a, a keen interest in electronics during his childhood days. Uh, like uh, I, I was just quoting those words from him, and I was just saying, and, and, and I would like to add that electronics is the only subject that can uh, blink and uh, uh, bulb in, inside your brain uh, whenever you see something fascinating, something blinking, or something running an LED or a or a light or a sound or anything like that or anything moving automatically. Even now, when you see something moving or or, or something is happening automized in an automized fashion we are fascinated right so this is the only uh, subject electronics is the only subject in science which actually uh, surprises you in each and every wake of your life uh, that's how i would like to put it the beauty of electronics so i'm really happy and glad that i'm part of this beautiful branch of science and uh, by, by saying that uh, i'd like to add this point that uh, e e an electronic enthusiast uh, can can go uh, and pursue uh, this field uh, regardless of age, uh, whether it might be any any age. Say, for example, uh, my, I have a friend of mine who is an old friend of mine. He is at, at, at the age of seventy. Uh, he is still uh, taking up old radios and repairing it. Uh, I just can't imagine that. I mean, taking up very old radios and he is he is repairing it. Uh, so so that's the beauty of this uh, subject. And uh, when you troubleshoot something, so this is another part. When you troubleshoot something, you will get an uh, entirely new feeling that okay, yeah, you did something great. And uh, that's one part of uh, the point. Second part is like when you come to R and D, research and development, there is an enormous amount of space vacant there. Uh, I can assure you that I mean the students who are listening to me, I can assure you that emo enormous amount of vacant space uh, uh, up there. For example, the uh, at the moment I am sitting in the campus of Rajagiri uh, uh, RSET, uh, Engineering and Technology. Uh, actually, we came here to install a, a product. Uh, it is also a, a kind of electronics and instrumentation kind of product in the college. Uh, so <laughs> I'm actually uh, on the field. Uh, anyway, uh, so what I meant, what I want to say is that we actually thought of uh, doing something new for this online platform. Uh, and we could actually uh, came up with a uh, system that can uh, enhance the way of teaching. Uh, actually, in fact, my my this today's session is uh, recorded on that platform only. You can you can see this in uh, in a few minutes from here. Uh, so th this is the wonderful uh, or this is the beauty of uh, incorporating instrumentation electronics. So this is a very good example that I can put forth uh, for you. I mean, in front of you. So what I would like to say is that I again and again assure that the field is hot. The field requires eminent skill personalities to work in industry as well as in the academic as well as more in the research uh, so whatsoever whether it be it whether it be covid 19 or anything like that you don't have to worry because the field that, that you have chosen is simply amazing so with these words i would like to thank uh, all the dignitaries who have joined for this uh, webinar today and also the head of the department of the uh, electronics and uh, Mrs. Uh, Rudishri, uh, she has been like following me for all the past couple of weeks. I'm really uh, grateful to her to put me uh, as a part in this program. So once again, thank you very much. And I think uh, uh, the technical side is on to you. Hi everyone, uh, a warm welcome to this lecture session. So myself, Arun, and uh, I am from uh, MMO College, Calicut. Uh, first of all, I would like to extend my thanks to uh, the HOD of the Electronics Department, St. Thomas College, Thrissur, as well as Mrs. Rudhishri, uh, with whom I used to have contact uh, for the past couple of weeks uh, to, to, to come up in front of you like this. Uh, she took really very good effort uh, to arrange a lecture session or coordinate me uh, to put me like this in front of you like this in behind a glass behind a light board and uh, give you a, a session on a very specific topic very relevant topic <clears throat> okay so the title of the topic is instrument and electronics a perfect sync in a perfect sync so that's that's how i used to put it uh, so if uh, 
uh, if you call why uh, i am taking this uh, topic because uh, you know it's been a very old topic it's been a very old combination a very successive combination uh, this instrumentation and uh, electronics instrumentation and electronics uh, so why i am taking this topic back again uh, to present in front of you is because my background is in electronics i did my post graduation in electronics and uh, for the past 7 years i am dealing with instruments my phd is on instrumentation uh, so i could find a perfect uh, you know synchronization between these two titles like electronics and instrumentation so this is how i thought okay uh, let me let me come up with some different idea uh, to emphasize the influence of electronics in instrumentation okay when you talk about instrumentation a small safety pin is an instrument you know that okay a small safety pin uh, say for example you take a safety pin it is for use uh, for a specific use so you call that as an instrument for a specific use likewise you take this pen or you take this tool a light bulb or you uh, take for granted anything that you come across in your life day to day life is an instrument so a, an instrument if you if you define an instrument an instrument is something that uh, serves a specific purpose and uh, <clears throat> earlier times instruments used to work as a standalone system uh, where it, it works for a specific system and it, it collects data and give you data in many forms okay then by the emergence of electronics i am talking about very high fi electronics by the emergence of electronics instrumentation the scenario of instrumentation changed entirely so this is the point where i used to emphasize the uh, see, the 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 the, uh, the uh, instrumentation field got a very good backbone with the support of electronics so that's how we used to put it that that's how i used i i, I would like to uh, put it uh, this lecture in towards that direction because we know that this combination is there uh, in our uh, you know engineering stream in our you know uh, graduation stream everywhere so uh, the the newness of this thing is i would like to take you to a few couple of examples and to show how electronics really complements instrument for its very high better better usability so that's how i used to put it okay so so before going into the core of this title i would like to give show a small example here uh, see out in here you can see in this uh, animated uh, picture uh, the uh, source you can see from here uh, is being splitted in two directions and it's been modulated and this modulation modulation is the capability of that instrument so this is actually a, a, a you know a, 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 a scattering experiment by particles in, inside a uh, uh, soluble uh, you know in, inside a solution okay and the detector which you can see from uh, this side this uh, the detector here uh, so this uh, detector is been switched efficiently so it's an indication but it's been switched efficiently to pick up the uh, specific uh, uh, light from these two uh, you know sources where it, it is getting splitted in the input section so this is a very perfect example of uh, automation of an instrument so the instrument is as such there for uh, years and years long back but when you couple it with electronics the uh, the the the, the uh, you know the dimension of the instrument changes it's become more uh, you know usable the usable usability of the instrument uh, really increases a lot when you couple electronics with the instrument so this is how it's done and uh, <clears throat> uh, before uh, you know uh, going into the technical side I would I would like to uh, walk you through a uh, small uh, you know example uh, one more example in this direction that is uh, say uh, you might have seen this picture so this is a jar and uh, you can see two frogs sitting in uh, two sides of this jar there are two dragons so from this you might you might have got a clue this is a cross section of that instrument yes of course so this is an instrument that is used for uh, uh, monitoring earthquake in older uh, times actually invented by the ancient chinese uh, people 
so it's a very this was the first instrument you can say if you uh, check the history of uh, seismometers so the focus is on seismometers so this is my first example so if you if you if you date back if you check the history of seismometer so you can see that this is the first ever invented seismo uh, detector you can say seismo instead of seismometer you can say seismo detector first ever built uh, by the chinese people um, okay so uh, the uh, working principle is very fantastic here you can see a heavy mass suspended inside the jar so due to inertia this heavy mass will um, tend to move in opposite direction uh, of the ground okay so if the ground is moving forward so this inertia uh, tends to uh, keep its position stable uh, in that way it 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 causes its uh, position to change uh, so that this 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 bar is attached with an axial system which is connected to the dragon's mouth and uh, uh, that is that is a ball that's a metal ball inside the mouth of the dragon and uh, there there are like eight frogs around the jar so it's a cross section of this instrument eight frogs around the jar and eight dragons with the ball inside the mouth so you can actually pinpoint uh, uh, by by seeing which ball is falling into the mouth of the frog and you can actually pinpoint in which direction the earthquake came so that's how they made such a fantastic instrument in the beginning to uh, monitor the seismic events okay so <clears throat> this actually evolved and it went on to the analog system so the instrument uh, got evolved and uh, this everyone knows this is a, a seismograph where you can uh, see a drum carrying a uh, paper uh, with a stylus and the stylus is again connected with an initial mass the principle is same so when it, it, any change in the mass will cause the stylus to move and this will be recorded on the paper so this is an analog kind of instrument which is a very old uh, uh, technique the problem with this instrument this instrument works really well okay the problem with the instrument is you uh, the it cannot it is not very sensitive it cannot sense very feeble uh, vibrations okay then came the real magic so this is a current modern version of the seismograph what you are seeing on my this side is uh, the uh, perfect uh, in combination of all the things in a small box it is digitized it can store it is connected to the cloud uh, it is connected to the iot internet i mean internet via iot systems and wherever you are sitting in the world you can access the data from this instrument and this instrument is very stable and uh, very sensitive okay so right from this so what i am what i want to emphasize is the principle of working of this instrument even you take this analog even you take this digital is same okay so but you can you can feel the difference right here a ball is used to detect the seismic events but you come all the way to this part everything is digitized even a small feeble movement of a of a truck uh, passing by is monitored in this instrument so what is actually increased the sensitivity the sensitivity of the digital system has been Im improvised a lot so uh, coming to the features of <clears throat> the com combination so these two combinations if you take the features from this example uh, so there are many plus points of uh, uh, attaching electronics or combining electronics with instruments okay the first thing as i mentioned the sensitivity of the instrument could be improved a lot okay so what do you mean by sensitivity even you know um, a, a, as i mentioned a small truck passing uh, by i mean near to that instrument this instrument can this instrument could sense okay the reachability of the instrument is also improved okay that you know a far away event could be monitored using this kind of instrument the uh, the selectivity is also improved by incorporating electronics a la huge amount of uh, hi-fi electronics into instrumentation okay that is you can select you can actually select the variable which you are interested in so that's what i meant as selectivity you can pinpoint the variable which you want to measure okay then <coughs> uh, it is very easy to analyze the data and store the data later for the later purpose uh, if it is digitized you all know that you 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 might have dealt with the dsp digital signal processing where you have a set of data which is like analyzed in real time scenario uh, so that's the advan uh, advancement of electronics that's happened in the past few years. 
that you process the data then and there, given output, and so that you can interfere with the instrument to correct it. So that's the amount of precision and uh, capability the instrument got because of backing of electronics. Okay. And uh, uh, it helps to automate and control. See, as I mentioned in this small box, it's very easy to control. It is very easy to carry. It is uh, highly mobile, as you can see from small box. Uh, okay. And it is uh, very easy to automate the entire setup. Say, for example, if you're carrying the instrument, the inertial mass should not move so that the instrument is not getting uh, damaged. <clears throat> so such kind of things uh, could be automated. Okay. So uh, the automation part, varies from instrument to instrument the controlling variables varies from instrument to instrument so this all can be done with the help of uh, electronic boards okay then uh, as i mentioned the with the emergence of iot's and cloud computing uh, you sit in the other part of the globe you can get access to the data uh, which has been recorded in the instrument because this instrument is uh, a part of iot system is a part of the network so wherever you sit, you can actually track the uh, instrument uh, or exactly monitor what happened in so-and-so date, so-and-so uh, hour, so-and-so second, even to the microsecond level, you can track the event, even if you're sitting in a different part of the world. Okay. One main important part I would like to mention is SNR, that is signal to noise ratio. Yes. So uh, signal to noise ratio is a very important aspect uh, when you consider instrumentation because uh, an instrument basically uh, works on the basis of uh, differentiating uh, the signal from noise. Okay. So if this is poor, then yeah, you are not you are getting gar garbage from the instrument. So uh, with the uh, proper incorporation of electronics with the specific instrument, you can actually improve the signal to noise ratio a lot. So that's why I would like to emphasize on this part. So the signal to noise ratio of the instrument really improves a lot with the, this combination. So perfect electronics combined with the, the instrument could actually uh, improve your uh, data as well as improve the usability of your data. Okay. So let me move on, move on to the uh, technical side of this discussion. Okay, so uh, I gave you a very small clue of uh, how an electronics could be incorporated with the instrument to improve its uh, improve it, uh, its uh, usability and uh, working capability. Okay, so <clears throat> uh, considering these facts, I have two examples uh, uh, to discuss in front of you. So one is a very popular circuit, which is uh, been used with all instruments which works on the basis basis of optics okay uh, optics so any uh, any 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 instrument that uses uh, optic optics as a source and a detector on the other end to sense that optical signal which contain which which contains very valuable information so in in that sort of instrument this uh, uh, circuit is very important so the discussion point is lock in amplifier lock in amplifier or detector lock in amplifier or detector so a lock in amplifier actually uh, consists of a uh, lock in section where you know it basically if you represent in a diagrammatic block diagrammatic representation like working of the lock in amplifier so you have uh, the signal vs of t okay which is like this imagine that this is a signal which uh, is submerged in uh, in a very noisy environment okay so this is vs imagine this is vs okay now you have a reference signal vr of t so which is having a specific frequency like this okay so you feed these two signals into lock in amplifier and uh, what you're getting in the output is only this signal so you you are getting the output here so only this signal which you want to see minus the noise 
Okay, so what is actually happening here is uh, a lock-in amplifier. If you if you want to define a lock-in amplifier, lock-in amplifier is a device that uh, actually <clears throat> you know get rid of uh, all the noise component. Uh, if it is a very noise environment, it will just take the signal alone and give it back to you. So now you might know, uh, you might understood like why I mentioned optical instrumentation because optics uh, interfere with a lot of uh, noise. Like for example, ambient light is a noise and you cannot, it is very hard to get rid of ambient noise, okay, uh, from the instrument. So you can use a lock-in amplifier circuit in order to uh, basically get rid of all the noise or if you want to see only the uh, frequency or only the phase or the amplitude differences in the uh, wavelength that you are interested in, you can use a lock-in amplifier. So that's the use of lock-in amplifier. It actually is a filter. It's a very perfect filter uh, where you get rid of all noise components and just, and just have uh, the desired uh, output that you want to see. Okay, so moving into the uh, the, 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 the real part of uh, lock-in amplifier, as you can see from here, let me just uh, get rid of this part. Okay, so a lock-in amplifier, as I mentioned, uh, is uh, shown in this figure uh, here on my right. So it's a, a representation of a lock-in amplifier used uh, in conjunction with a chopper. I will explain why this chopper is used for. And uh, it's uh, for uh, detecting uh, some absorption event. Okay, some absorption in some uh, material, some soluble. Okay, so you have a, a laser, then a chopper, and then the entire system. Just forget about the system. And then you have this locking block, and then the uh, reference uh, signal. Okay, so what's happening here is, you actually, you know what laser is, right? It's a monochromatic, uh, highly beamed or omnidirectional light source. And it, 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 it's, it's actually a, uh, you know, coherent kind of uh, beam. Uh, means it consists of only one wavelength. So this laser uh, will uh, laze at a particular frequency. If it is continuous, it will be interfered with the ambient light. So what we want to do is, we just want to make the laser pulsating. So instead of a continuous lacing action, what we will do is we will make it into pulsating form of thing. So that's why you use a chopper. So this is a fan actually. Use this chopper for this purpose. So this, the same, this, now you know the frequency of this because you know the frequency of the chopper. Okay, so you just uh, give, uh, I mean, chop the laser like that and use the same frequency uh, you just, just send it through the system. So this is the system, okay? Where you can see a, you know, a, a, a you know, they put an arrangement here, okay? To absorb or scatter or something, which you don't have to worry about. Then you will get an output from the system. So this is an output. <clears throat> okay, so this output is fed to the, now this is fed to the lock-in amplifier. So this output is fed to the lock-in amplifier. Then you have the reference of the chopper also fed to the lock-in amplifier. So there will be a mathematical process happening inside the lock-in amplifier. Uh, but this lock-in amplifier itself is a circuit, electronic circuit. And what you get is you can, you will see only the amplitude shift in the laser. So what I mean is, for example, uh, suppose this is the output. So let me just uh, rub, like hide this one. Okay. So this is the laser amplitude shift, and this is time. Say so this is a laser amplitude shift like this, and uh, this is actually submerged in uh, like high heavy noise if this uh, you know lock-in amplifier is not used. Okay. So what actually uh, happens here is the phase of this reference signal and the phase of this output signals is is actually matched. So this is how it is done. So it will take only those signal with those phase match. Okay, so that the uh, change in amplitude of this laser signal is, act, I mean, exactly, uh, you know, uh, retrieved in the op output of this uh, lock-in amplifier. Hope you got what I said. Clear? So, uh, the phase of this laser lacing thing and the reference is matched and only those part is taken out 
and plotted. Only thing is you'll get a pulsated output. It's okay if you just uh, do a quick sampling or if you just digitize it and uh, do a quick processing, you'll get a continuous signal as before. Okay, so this pulsating actually you can uh, you can actually fix this pulsating and you can uh, you can say what resolution you need uh, to make it uh, retrieved in the output or the desired resolution that you can design. Okay, earlier. So this is how the lock-in process works. So it actually matches the phase of the pulse the uh, source and the reference from the same pulse source out of the system and then mixed in the lock-in amplifier and retrieve the output in the desired way. So it actually get rid of, so the system consists of lot of other lights, okay? And output consists of heavy noise, okay? So this is what I said. So this output consists of heavy noise and this lock-in will fix that phase, okay, this phase, to the phase of this output because output will also consist of what signal right so that signal is been like filtered out that signal is been matched with the reference to take only the signal out from a pool of noise so that's what i meant so then finally you can retrieve the signal like this so very good uh, electronic circuitry example in uh, you know in co you know um, in in combination with instrument um, may, i mean like Majority of the optical based instrument use lock in amplifier so that they get a very perfect output. In fact, we did an experiment a couple of years back in China where we have to uh, transmit laser to a long distance, <clears throat> okay? And you know, uh, in the outdoor environment, and the outdoor environment is full of noise like ambient light, anywhere from the street lamps, anywhere like that. So we used a lock in amplifier to get only uh, the laser wavelength that we thought of. Okay, of that we design. Uh, so not only uh, this application, any application that use optics as a source and an optical detector, use a lock-in amplifier in the as a very perfect uh, filter to filter out only the signal. So uh, that's why I told you the signal-to-noise ratio is an important factor. So this is this signal-to-noise ratio has been improved a lot and lot and lot. So before uh, earlier, if this is not used, you can you cannot actually uh, you know differentiate the original shift in the amplitude of the laser due to the system. Okay, system imparts some shift in the amplitude. That's what we want to see actually. So we cannot, earlier we cannot see before the invent of lock-in in 1930, uh, we cannot see the, or we cannot retrieve the output signal from a system. So now it is possible with the help of lock-in amplifier. So thanks to R&D in this area of electronics, uh, because of which many, many optical based spectroscopic instruments have been built. I mean, especially in the ambient, uh, atmosphere okay hope you got the uh, you know the hint of why we want to combine electronics with instrumentation okay so now we go into the real electronics part of this lock in amplifier just i will just skim through it okay so so this is a circuitry of lock in amplifier so don't get tensed by seeing the circuit so it's actually very simple if you uh, look from uh, the splitted uh, angle okay so this part so right vertically so this part is a uh, amplifier system to amplify the weak signal and this is the uh, demodulator system lock-in demodulator system and this is the low pass uh, system so you lie right uh, you know in the third section so you have actually three sections one is amplifier section then the uh, you know the demod demodulating section that is lock-in demodulation section and then <clears throat> the uh, low pass uh, filtering section. So this low power filtering section is very important because it actually uh, takes only the signal. Uh, say for example, this uh, you know the nature of the noise. The noise is noise is having very high frequency. So that this entire system is a filter. Lock-in is a filter, but this low pass filter plays a very important role. You have to actually fix the cut in frequency uh, where you are looking it. Okay. So this depends upon the resolution of the pulse that are you you giving given. Uh, to the uh, source okay i mean the chopper frequency that's what i meant so you want to really design this low pass frequency with a bit of care, bit care of the chopping frequency okay so now again this chopping chopper is not being used nowadays we are using a modulated signal to the laser and this laser has been uh, turned on and off in a particular frequency so no mechanical element there as chopper so this is the actual circuitry of lock-in amplifier okay uh, testing of lock-in amplifier takes real 
uh, pain actually this is the first assignment that i got when i joined uh, as a research scholar uh, here in nit calicut <clears throat> so so this is the first assignment i got from here and i i got it through like this instrument uh, an instrument in ireland is still using this board uh, which we made for lock in purpose okay so uh, there there is another version of lock in amplifier this so this is a a uh, digital version of lock in amplifier so where you have say digital version if i say digital version uh, then you should have to uh, think about uh, the digital signal processing okay so you should think about the signal so i would just give a quick reference of what i'm saying actually the lock in is a mixer of what as i as i mentioned in the symbolic diagram of locking it's a mixer of uh, the signal which is having pulse in nature with the reference signal okay so it is actually getting mixed up so you can see you can say it is it is mixed up and uh, a process is happening there which is um, like a sensitive phase detection system okay the phase of these two signals will be matched and it will take only those signal with the with those phase matching okay so you can say it's a phase sensitive detector happening inside the lock in box so that's a crucial uh, you know uh, process that's happening inside the lock in amplifier that is phase sensitive detection okay so if you write it in mathematics like um, v phase sensitive detector is given as the input signal the reference signal vl sin omega rt sorry uh, this is actually r okay sin omega rt plus theta signal so this is the phase multiplied with sin omega lt plus theta signal so this is the uh, let me correct it uh, it is actually so it is actually uh, vl sorry for my confusion so this is what is happening inside a lock in uh, detector <clears throat> okay so this these two signals so v signal is a amplitude this is the frequency and this is the phase okay this is the uh, frequency of the reference and uh, this is the phase of the reference sorry frequency of the uh, signal okay so it it's actually getting multiplied the process which is happening inside the lock in is uh, is this you are multiplying these two signals right as i mentioned before once you do this i'm not going into the further mathematics you will get two ac components two ac components then you use a, as i mentioned you use a low pass filter low pass filter to get rid of these two ac components what left behind is perfect dc points that you can plot on the basis of time axis okay so this is what you want in finally in your lock in section you this is time and you have to actually get what's happening uh, with the help of the system so this is what you want to see so this could be achieved with the help of this uh, you know digitizing the process so this is where we use uh, digital signal processing to implement the vpst or this equation okay and low pass filter uh, the pg students of electronics might know or might know to design uh, using digital signal processing kits uh, low pass filter so low pass filter very easy to implement using uh, various algorithms you might have uh, came across these algorithms in your laboratory okay so <clears throat> this is how this box here on my right has been built uh, using uh, i mean incorporating this algorithm so this is how you can digitize the uh, lock in process okay so this is one example of uh, using a perfect electronics board like a lock in amplifier lock in detector board with an any any optical system as i mentioned with the help of chopper the lasing arrangement that i mentioned before so uh, any sort of instrument uh, could use this lock in amplifier to uh, you know take out the uh, signal alone from the pool of noise okay so the second instrument i would like to or second uh, you know example i would like to discuss with you is 
I'll take F T I R. You might have uh, know what F T I R is. It's like Fourier transform infrared spectroscopy. Okay, so F T I R is a very uh, popular tool used to detect the uh, molecules or to 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 conduct the molecular spectroscopy to identify which kind of molecule is present in so and so compound. Okay, so it it is it, it actually works in this principle. A, uh, an, inco an incoherent, uh, like you know, multiple wavelength beam is being uh, hit on that molecule, and molecule will absorb or scatter depending upon its atomic, uh, you know, uh, energy. Uh, and uh, this instrument will uh, look at the infrared region of that uh, absorption or scattering process. So that's the principle of FTIR working. So this is the uh, brain or the core of FTIR system. So it is an arrangement of uh, the, the, the core principle of working of this FTIR is Michelson's interferometry. Okay, so Michelson's interferometry is for many purposes and this is one of the uh, purpose uh, of its usage. It, it has a source, it has a detector, then it has two mirrors, one stationary and uh, on this end, movable mirror. Okay, so this uh, I, I won't go very deep into Michelson interferometry because the, for the title, the focus is not there. Okay, so this mirror will just understand that light passes in these two axes, like light from the uh, source, it just uh, goes all the way to mirror one and then to the moving mirror. It comes back and uh, gets absorbed in the uh, detector. Now, uh, this will have the all the all the you know all the information regarding the uh, response of the sample sample will be kept anywhere in the path okay response from the sample uh, in each and every wavelength and how do you simulate wavelength using this experiment see this movable mirror arrangement will cause the wavelength to shift so that's the core of the working so just understand the principle that's all okay i'm not going into very deep of this instrumental concept so this movable mirror will cause the uh, wavelength to shift okay so that you will get a uh, by moving the mirror from one point to another you can actually record the entire uh, spectrum okay the response of the molecule in the entire spectrum so that's how uh, FTIR works okay so our focus is how to move the mirror uh, so that each and per each and every point of that uh, uh, mirror position corresponds to its wavelength so for that we use a you know system like this so this is uh, this is a you know solenoid kind of arrangement which i took from the uh, infra uh, ftir spectrometer okay so this is a coil arrangement uh, with the magnet inside this dome and uh, with a mirror attached to the system you can see this is kind of a tube right so this tube alone won't make the uh, you know mirror will uh, mirror to move uh, you need to attach something along with this, so that's the coil. So this this is this is very uh, you know specific purpose coil which will be connected to the uh, you know solenoid of this arrangement, so that the current is very precisely adjusted, so that mirror will take each and every position, which depends upon the designer. Okay, which position corresponds to what wavelength? So that's that's the core of FTIR. So this mirror movement has been adjusted with the help of the current flowing through the coil. Hope you understood the point. And this current has to be controlled precisely so that this current corresponds to the wavelength in the output. Okay, each and every position of the mirror is being controlled by the current and so that the current corresponds to wavelength that you are seeing the output. I uh, hope you got the connection. Okay, for that you need a very precise circuitry to control this current flow in the coil. So that's the uh, if you if you get a chance to open an FTIR, you can see a very complex board behind the instrument. The instrument as such is very simple. As you can see, a detector, a, a source, two mirrors. That's it. And follows a Michelson's interferometric principle. But behind the scene is the electronics working out. Clear? So that's what I want to see. Each and every uh, you know millimetric movement has been controlled precisely by the current flowing through the coil. So that's how this mirror attached to the magnet is getting moved 
then you will get a shift in wavelength and this has been recorded in the output not only that this current has to be synced with the wavelength that you are seeing in the display of the instrument okay for that you need very uh, you know uh, very uh, precise instrumentation or very precise board to interact with the current flowing in the coil with the wavelength that you are seeing in the output so that's the amount of electronics that's been uh, you know used in today's instrument so that you get a much better and better output from the instrument okay so uh, this is uh, the um, this is the couple of instruments that i would like to discuss at this moment uh, just to you know demonstrate how electronics has really helped the instrument uh, to move a huge uh, way clear uh, one small example of my ex my my own research i'll just uh, wind up with this small example so let's get rid of this thing so my my area is like like uh, it's known as it's again spectroscopy okay and a spectroscopy as i mentioned a spectroscopic instrument will uh, detect the uh, species which is present uh, in the uh, you know sampling chamber okay whether it might be a liquid or it might be a gas or it might be a solid okay so my area of research is to uh, monitor the uh, you know the the pollutants present in the atmosphere both both gas as well as aerosols aerosols are small tiny particles suspended in the atmosphere okay so for detecting the gas we have uh, devised an instrument known as ceas which consists of very highly reflecting mirrors so you say this mirror one mirror two so which is having a concave form of nature uh, in one side so you just face this concave uh, faces uh, of these two mirrors uh, face to face so there will be a source at one end and there will be a detector so this is a simplified form of this instrument okay so source will send light the source could be a laser or a broadband consisting of many uh, wavelength so the light will pass through the uh, mirror one and then mirror one both the mirrors are partially you know transmitting so light will pass through the mirror and uh, it will hit on this face since it is highly reflecting it will be uh, you know reflected back since it is concave you can literally have n number of reflections and each reflection there will be some component coming out because as i mentioned this is semi transparent uh, mirrors so this small component will have the information so this has been detected by the uh, detector here so this is the uh, very crude form of explaining ceas ceas cavity enhanced absorption spectroscopy okay where uh, you can really study the light extrusion caused by different species of gases so that's the main use of this instrument uh, and if you use a broadband for example i'll, I'll just say uh, nitrogen dioxide will uh, have a very strong uh, absorption at uh, 400 to 410 nanometer okay nitrate no3 which has a very strong absorption at uh, around uh, 632 nanometer in the red region okay iodine <clears throat> a very important uh, trace pollutant seen in the uh, <coughs> polar regions i'll go <coughs> So iodine, uh, a very uh, common pollutant seen in the polar region, has uh, the absorption around 532 nanometer in this region. So you can see each wavelength uh, band has got, uh, you know, each species has got its own signature and different wavelength bands. So that's what I meant. Uh, so if you're using a very broadband source, okay, very broadband source, say a, a, a very powerful uh, bright light, you can actually detect all the species using a single instrument. Okay, now my focus is on the source. <clears throat> the source is a very expensive instrument at the moment. We are using very expensive instrument as source because it should be uh, really powerful. It should be um, having a provision to collimate the light inside this uh, tunnel or the sampling chamber. So uh, there was an idea proposed by me some couple of years back to use the source 
So instead of using a source as such, use sun as the source. Using sun as the source. So for that, I actually improvised the instrument. I actually improvised the instrument like this. So, so this is a sampling chamber. Two mirrors will come here, okay, and it is looking at the sun. And it is actually using a lens. You can tunnel the light inside. Then you use some detector for that, and you then you use the uh, computer. Detector is connected to the computer to get the any anyway. This part is not uh, to be mentioned at the moment. So uh, this instrument actually tracks the uh, you know sun. For that. I actually, uh, instead of using a, uh, you know, light uh, sensor, I used a, a zenith angle of the earth has been considered. And this instrument will follow that zenith angle uh, on every time average. Okay, so that it can track the sun precisely. Okay, so here the electronics part comes in this point because the, the precise electronics, that's what I meant. Okay, because the sun is often hindered by clouds or any form of dust or anything like that. Or, or heavy particles like uh, you know smoke kind of thing so this light source is not very stable so you need you need to normalize those effects in the instrumental output so what do you mean by normalize you just get rid of those effects in the output right so for that i actually proposed <coughs> two detectors so you can say it d2 so d2 attached very near to d1 and d2 will look at the sun very near to this uh, arrangement directly without the chamber so that you will get a proportion of the light coming from the uh, sun here and then you normalize with the output that you are getting from the system so like just like i mentioned in the lock-in uh, something similar to that uh, is what i designed for this instrument so these two detectors has to work in a synchronized fashion then it has to normalize it has to actually do there's uh, a bit of uh, FTIR or sorry, uh, FAR filtering and uh, uh, normalizing process, which is happening in the background using electronic systems. Uh, so then this entire system was automized. So what I what I want to uh, emphasize is that my experience in electronics really helped me a lot to improvise the instrument that has been currently used even today. You know, without having any electronic support. So there are a lot many instruments in R and D as well as in the commercial field where they need to be used in a much better way where electrons can really go deep in to help those instruments to work in a much 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 better way so that's what my point is so that's how i would like to conclude <clears throat> that uh, by uh, you know uh, you know by 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 incorporating uh, the knowledge of electronics into even the current form of instruments you can actually improve the capability of the instrument a lot Instrument alone will have a certain amount of capability, but if you add electronics, you can even improve the capability of instrument to something like a cent percentage capability of the instrument. So that's what my point is. So electronics works everywhere. Okay. Uh, so uh, as far as I'm concerned, I'm very uh, lucky to work in these two areas like instrumentation and electronics. And also I am lucky enough to, you know, combine these two fields in a much better way. For the betterment of uh, scientific world so thank you very much for listening to me if you have any doubts just throw back to me i would i would like to help you in the uh, limited knowledge span that i have and once again i would like to thank uh, for giving me a chance to present my little bit of experience in front of you so thank you and have a very nice day bye Uh, thank you, sir. It was such a wonderful session. And if you have any queries, you can post in the chat box. Hello, everyone. As always, I need to check whether we are live or not. Now, um, I take this opportunity to extend my sincere gratitude to the resource person, Mr. Varunath, 
HOD, Department of Electronics, MMO College, Calicut, for spending his precious time despite from his busy schedule. Uh, thank you, sir, for your efforts and constant cooperation. Uh, by this, our technical session has come to an end. First session has come to an end. Our next technical uh, session will be sh is scheduled at 12 p.m. Uh, all participants are requested to join the next session on time. Uh, thank you so much.